All right, all right. Finally able to rank every weapon in Population 1. I'm ranking based on my own opinion and playtesting. So they are subjective. C tier is below average and S tier is top picks. Before we go ahead and jump into the video and start ranking the weapons, I wanted to clarify and wrap up my opinion about the shields, heals, and grenades. Zone grenades be average grenades because average grenades can get blocked off by builds. Zone grenades have more of a guarantee of damage and resources of moving your opponent away from you. Health sodas are not recommended. Bananas are the one to be using for heals. And shield sodas beat shield shakers. The objective from this video is to help you reach your rank goals and have genetically advanced biceps like all the top 500 players must have. Most genetically perfect one in the contest. Oink. Oh my god. To start off the below average C tier, we have the knife of course. Although it's good enough to 3-tap noobs, we obviously don't use it for the entire match. Up next in the below average C tier is the Seiko Sniper. After getting nerfed, it doesn't do much against weapons like the Magnum and AWP. Any weapon, really. It just isn't the meta this time around. Now in the below average C tier list, we have the MK18. This weapon, after getting nerfed, loses its automatic fire and has more bouncy recoil. That's my reason I put the MK18 so low on the list. It lacks versatility. Being the only burst AR doesn't mean it's not usable, it's just you're giving yourself a handicap when trying to climb the ranks, especially when you're using this weapon against higher ranked enemies. Trust me, they will evade your shots due to shooting in a slow burst and not fully automatic. And this is why I ranked it so low on the list. The 1911 pistol joins the C tier for not having a faster fire rate than the other pistol in the game. It does have a little more damage, but shoots slower, so it's up to you and your playstyle if you decide to play with it. I prefer faster fire rate for more movement and less concentration. And finally, for the below average C tier, we have the AKM. Only thing I have to say is the recoil is really horrendous. When I have my left hand on the weapon and I fire, my left hand just rips right off the weapon. That's how bad the recoil is. First weapon going into the average B tier is the Uzi. It seems like whenever I notice players using the Uzis, I'm nowhere as afraid to push them as if they were using an assault rifle. That being said, it feels like they're only good for destroying builds and covering your teammates. Next weapon in the average B tier is the PX4 pistol. It has a faster fire rate than the 1911. It is fun to play with because the movement doesn't affect aim, so shooting and climbing shouldn't be hard. Other than that, the pistols are this low on the list because there's just too many weapons to choose from. Now to end off the average B tier, we have the DT shotgun. It's not useful when climbing due to its huge kickback, and even when two-handed, it stands no chance against the Matadors. Up next for the average B tier is the M60. For one thing, it's too heavy and makes you slow. The recoil goes crazy after about half the magazine is fired, but purple rarity is hard to come by, so if found in the beginning of the game, after potting, it could be useful in a pinch with its huge magazine. And that's why M60 is in the B tier. It's kind of like the MK18. It's not so useful up close or from far. It just has a huge magazine which could be useful. That being said, the MP5 joins C tier as in my opinion, it's the worst SMG at the moment. It has slow time to kill builds and picking up anything lower than purple or gold rarity decreases ammo capacity. Overall, the MP5 just can't compete with the other SMGs, especially when it comes to one-handed shooting. In slightly above average A tier, we have the M1014 shotgun. It's the easiest to use, so new players will enjoy holding down the trigger and not tap firing. The M1014 has an easy reload and without handicaps like other shotguns have with recoil and dual wheel. So this shotgun should be easy enough to pick up and fight in close quarters. Finally, for the slightly above average A tier, we have the Cyberblade. It's easily one of the best weapons for indoors and is one of my favorite weapons to use. Other than that, it doesn't have very much versatility and is a two hit kill. First on the above average A tier is the CX-4, which was my favorite gun for a while until the new ARs came out. It's still very accurate, little to no recoil, but it isn't the strongest weapon. Now UMP is in the above average A tier because of how easy it is to use, 
The UMP is useful for mid to close range gunfights, but has a low damage output of 12. Where this weapon really shines is in one handed head peaks. It almost guarantees that your opponent will be looking for health and armor if they survive. Next up for the average A tier is the P90. It's probably the best SMG up close for a majority of players due to its high fire rate and damage output. Plus it has the biggest magazine out of the SMGs but its handling is odd being that the P90 has a backwards reload rather than the traditional way of doing it. Honestly, really to be consistent with this gun if you're having a hard time with it because you're new to the game, give it some time and once you get used to it, it's not that hard of a gun to use. Up next for S tier is the FAL. It's consistent from far with high damage output. It's really all about tapping enemies from where they won't see you. The FAL can be okay one handed when you get used to doing it. All of that can be easy because of not having a fully automatic weapon. The S tier we have the Matadors. These dual wielding shotguns are easily the strongest shotguns for the one tap potential. When gold or purple. Only cons are that you can't climb and may misfire the Matadors if you don't put them away before looking at the map. It's hard to see when emptying the clips, even though it has these issues. If they didn't, then the Matadors wouldn't be fair. Now for S tier is the RFB. It is not as straightforward with the recoil as the CX-4, but has a faster fire rate. Pulling down on the RFB makes it more accurate, so it's great for mid range, but isn't very impactful from long distances. It's also very easy to find, but not the best at destroying build. Up next in S tier is the Magnum. Magnum can be very dangerous from far and close, but has some kickback and zero bullet drop. The Magnum is good for consistent fire like the FAL, but benefits of being a pistol. It's hard to shoot one handed. The Magnum being a well rounded hit scan with good mobility is the reason it's in S tier. Last but not least for S tier, we have the AWP Sniper. It's one of the best weapons because it's the only weapon of its kind for long ranges. It doesn't do any good for you for close range and its ammo is hard to find. So now that I've ranked every weapon in population one, what's your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below. Would you have changed any of these weapons and ranked them differently? My name is Splurge. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the subscribe and never miss another one of my Population 1 videos. Thanks again. See you on the next one.